What's up everyone? I am taking part in Team Tour today. In case you don't know what Team Tour is, it is a Super Auto Pets tournament where 18 different groups of 7 players each compete for glory and fun. And sometimes even maybe cash prizes, I'm not really sure. But uh, my team consists of players such as Damon, Violet Citizen, Coty, Drazy, Jiggy and Ambo. So we have a very strong selection of players right here. By the way, if you want to keep a closer eye on the progression of the tournament, I strongly suggest that you join the SAP Dojo Discord server, for which I will leave a link in the description. And today, we will be facing off against the team called Throwing for Content, which uh, you can probably guess by the name, but it is a team entirely comprised of SAP tubers. So we have Suboptimal, we have Super Auto Gaming, who is their captain, we have Scooty, and we have my opponent for this episode, who is going to be RevGT. We also have Wombat, Mirko, and Anne Disney. And uh, I don't really want to spoil too much, but the matchups have gone very favorably for us. And uh, today I had to face RevGT, who I think. Like, I don't want to toot my own heart too much, but uh, I think I'm a little bit better than him. And we both put restrictions on ourselves just to make it a little more fun. This will be a restriction we will both be following throughout the season. So RevGT, I believe, is doing a wheel. Like, he's going to be spinning a wheel and choosing randomly between playing Turtle Pack, Puppy Pack, Star Pack and Golden. Whereas I will be doing a ladder. So you can see right here at the bottom I have played Puppy Pack. At the top I have played Star Pack. This run I have probably covered for spoilers in the middle. But basically the premise is that I cannot play two runs on a same pack. I have to do every single fight on a different pack until I go through them all, even Unicorn included. So, me and Trev agreed on a best of 7 and I really wanted to show this game in the middle for an example because I think it's very informative. So let's hop into it. And you will see right off the bat that we are playing in Golden Pack. I am not super happy with my start but I think freezing an apple is a relatively good decision. And unfortunately the rolls are not too pleasant for me but at least we do have Pi Termeran plus Groundhog. And you will see right here in the fight that Rev is going to be playing with the star pack. So this is a matchup that should be very favorable for me. Like I think, like I don't know, I don't think I'm qualified enough to give percentages, but I think it's like sort of around the 90 to 10 win ratio for golden pack, which is kind of crazy to think about. And I will show you why it is so crazy. Like, may maybe like a big part of it comes from inexperience from me and Ref, and we don't really know how to play the packs correctly during these matchups. But you can see right here that we are going to snag yet another victory. So Ref is on the back foot right of the get go because he's going to be go going down to five lives, whereas we have six hearts. And if we take a look at the pack that is golden, we have very good tempo pets. We have stuff like the sea urchin, stuff like the African penguin which gives a lot of attack. And we also have stuff like the lizard and uh, maybe even some, something like the squid which has a lot of base attack. And if you have played anything of the star pack you will know that their game plan is basically to build up one or two big units in the early game. So our game plan is going to be to counter that and we're going to be doing that by hopefully getting a decent level up. So here we find an Osprey which is a very good pet I think because it is a summon pet. We also find an African Penguin as well. So we're going to start buffing up the attack. I think this positioning is relatively decent to have. We are putting the one attack unit behind the sea urchin, so hopefully it takes something out. 
And you can see right off the bat he has started making one big leech which uh, is going to get countered by our high attack and we are winning once again. So yeah, our plan is to continue putting on the pressure and we are going to be doing that by getting some more attack with the African penguins. Very curiously right here you see me not actually combining the African penguins for the level 2 attack buff, but instead we are going to be saving the level up for next turn, because while on tier 3 we have some pretty decent stuff that we can find, I am honestly looking at the tier 4 pets right here because a lot of them are going to be super useful to us. We have stuff like the secretary bird and the poison dart frog which are incredible for tempo. We even have something like the saiga antelope which can generate a large amount of trumpets if we build a summon team. We also have like a cuttlefish which could perhaps trade with a high stat unit like his leech. And we also have like Falcon and Slug which can potentially give multiple summons as well for something like a Secretary Bird and a Poison Dart Frog. So yeah, that is our game plan, we're going to be preserving the level up. Let's hop into the battle right here, I'm going to slightly reposition, I don't think it's going to matter but it's still good to play optimally. And yeah, you can see he's heavily invested in his leech right here and even though he gets very decent math we just destroy him by the sheer power of the sea urchin. So he is down to 3 hearts, it's very difficult for him to stabilize. And we get the level up which is the much desired poison dart for guide right here. I honestly think on this turn I commit a little bit of a misplay and I will talk about it a little bit later on but you can see me here picking up the poison dart frog. It's going to work excellently with the osprey. Osprey giving a summon means that this gets 2 triggers of its ability therefore dealing 8 snipe damage in total which is almost enough damage to take this out which is kind of crazy to think about because this is basically his entire team this is just some weak units that are waiting to be leeched and uh, their stats to be um, absorbed by the strong units that he will build in the future but for now we are hoping that he doesn't even get to the late game and we can take him out relatively early on so we are going to take a weasel we are going to take a lettuce and this is the misplay that i kind of wanted to discuss right here because I had not been thinking about my game plan and what it should be at this point in the game. Like Weasel, I think it's a generally good unit and uh, I am biased towards units that generate more gold to, during the start of the turn. But um, for this kind of setup you really want to be having something like a better fish or a flea. Even something like a Royal Flycatcher wouldn't be too horrible if he goes for a summon team. And even something like a Meerkat maybe, but Weasel just gives some extra gold which can be good, but there are some better things that you can find out there and you will see at the beginning of the next turn I think we are going to pivot off of it. But for now, you can see Ref has transitioned into two big units now and even though the math isn't perfect. We have just the right positioning for where we can win and for the weasel to faint as well. So here we go, now we have found the flea. Flea is actually perfect for star pack because not only can they not counter it, they can't even snipe it away and also it definitely targets the most healthy enemy unit. So it's not like the bat where it's random, it's always going to target in this scenario the leech and of course that is where we want the weakness to land the most. We don't really want it to land here on the 1 HP Duff or on the 5 HP Guinea Pig. So this is just the perfect unit for us. And we had to sell the Weasel to get it. I don't really know if my positioning is any good right here. Maybe I was a little bit panicky. And uh, I think I will probably even reposition at the end of the turn. Yeah, you can see right here. I am putting the African penguin at the front. Why am I doing that? I'm not really sure honestly. But um, I think it was to counter the praying mantis because I was thinking it would have tons of HP. 
Yeah, now that I'm looking at it, it's going to get 2 HP from its ability and then 2 more HP from the Duff. So yeah, it's going to have 8 HP and therefore we will need both of these units to take it out. So I guess that was my reasoning. But we will see in the battle whether that reasoning pays off for us. In the meantime, we find a very lucky sea urchin, so we have a tier up for the next turn. And yeah, we're going to continue, hopefully winning. And yeah, from the looks of it, you can tell by the weakness of the Mantis, it's actually going to be pretty simple for us to win. And actually, the 1-1 Golden Retriever does a lot of work for us. So now, Rev is only on a single heart. We have done an excellent job of pressuring him, he doesn't even have time to find the units that he wants. With this sort of setup, I'm guessing he wants a Shoebill because he has double strawberries and Shoebill also gives more HP than attack, which he definitely needs. So yeah, if we can take him out on this turn, we will be extremely happy. And we level up into something very good here in the Wolf. Wolf an extremely good tempo pet, especially when you have weakness on the enemy units. And here we will give double waffle to the African penguin for the extra bit of attack, selling it and then putting in the wolf as well. Positioning the wolf to be fourth gives us so many summons actually. Like one from the golden retriever, then one from the wolf itself, then one from the pig. So this poison dart frog is getting to deal 12 damage by itself. And from the weakness, that is actually 21 damage in total, I believe. 7 times 3 makes 21, if I'm, uh, I think I'm doing the math correctly. So yeah, let's hop into the battle and see how we do. He actually found a pretty good setup right here with the Triceratops plus the Leech. So we'll, he will be getting lots of HP every single turn. But I think it is just a little bit too late for him and you will see why. We get to reduce the HP of the Triceratops, because the Sea Urchin is level 2, we also get to reduce the HP of the Leech too. And it will result in a relatively simple victory for us. You can see the Poison Dart for dealing 7 damage, then the Pigs are going to take out the Leech, then we have the last Pig taking out the Crawl, and we even had 2 more Snipes from the Poison Dart Frog in reserve. So I think we played that extremely well and I am happy to announce that we got a 4-0 victory over Rev. So yeah, I'm really curious to see how he edits his video but this is the run I'm going to show you from our set. If you are curious about more, I think I, he will be posting our set more detailed in the future so go check that out. But for now, this will be my coverage of week one from the team tour. If you did enjoy, I hope that you like, sub, do all the generic stuff, and I will talk to you next time. Take care.